We're here with uh, Mr. Argo, and he seems to have an interesting theory of what happened to JFK on the 22nd of November, 1963. So, what would that be? This is a this is a very small part of the whole Kennedy assassination, but it's it's interesting, and I think it's not well known even to people who've studied this. So, I was going to graduate school at Georgetown in 1998, and one of my fellow classmates was a man probably in his mid-40s who, who was in the CIA. And I was talking to him one day, I don't know why or how, but we were just, we was in passing mentioned the Kennedy assassination. And uh, I mentioned somewhere along there that uh, the rifle that Oswald used was the I forget the caliber, but the the Manlicker car, the Manlicker Carcano, and he was he was like, "Wow, you actually know what kind of rifle Lee Harvey Oswald used?" I said, "Well, yeah, I thought some people knew that, but." And at that point, he offered me. He said, "Hey, I know something you don't know, and you'd probably be pretty interested in this." And I said, "What?" And he says, "Well, I've been working for the CIA for several years as as an as an analyst, as a researcher, and." I can tell you, he said, on November 22nd, 1963, at the end of the day, when all of the Secret Service agents and police officers and FBI and Secret Service and whoever else, anybody and everybody who had, who was authorized to have a gun that day for protection, they obviously had to, every day they have to turn in their, their, their handgun unless they have permission to keep one overnight, I suppose. And so at the end of the day, as per their routine, uh, the, the Dallas police officers would turn in their rifles and handguns and things like this. But it was noted that one person in particular turned in, when they turned in their weapon, they all, always had to empty the, you know, take the bullets out and it was noted that they turned in one less bullet than had been initially uh, you know, taken out at the beginning of the day. And this was never picked up by the Warren Commission because whoever was doing the inventory did not highlight that. They simply took it down as a matter of fact that you know, John P. Mulroney, whatever his name was, um, you know, was issued 14, was, was issued 15 rounds at 7 o'clock in the morning and, and, and turned in one less round at the end of the day. And so uh, years later, as, as, as some of these Kennedy assassin, assassin uh, researchers were checking and rechecking and rechecking again all the possible what-ifs, they, they looked into the, uh, the weapons inventory and they indeed discovered that there was one individual who uh, who obviously discharged their weapon that day and uh, the person they went to at the time was a CIA agent and they uh, they asked him by the way what I mean this is this is an individual this is not the government subpoenaing issuing a subpoena to an individual saying what happened here this is simply a, uh, a, a researcher going to a private individual saying, you were at the Kennedy assassination, you were there in Dallas that day, you were, according to these records, it says here in the morning that you were issued 15 rounds and you turned in, looks to me like 14 rounds, what happened to that one round? And the CIA agent said, I'm not talking to anybody. And the, uh, that's about as far as this story goes in that the researcher has never been able to, to, to have the government you know, put leverage on this individual to disclose what happened to their, you know, or to a, conduct an investigation as to what happened to that round. And uh, I know a number of people, at least this is what I was told, a number of people that were made aware that this, this actually happened offered this individual some kind of money, $100,000 or something like this, if they would just talk. And uh, the person never talked. 
That's a historical record as far as I know, and it's, it's pretty sketchy, so I, I'd underscore that. The other part of this is that when the Kennedy family was made aware that a CIA officer that day evidently discharged their weapon either consciously or, or, or accidentally, they, they, were the pe they were the people who discouraged any further investigation. And you might be asking why. Why wouldn't the Kennedy family, they would be most interested in finding out who might have been involved. Why didn't they want to investigate this possible, you know, whatever connections this person might have had? And so the man that I was speaking with said that at least his theory on it, and I would probably go, I would probably agree, he said that the uh, Kennedy family probably did not, given that John F. Kennedy was dead already, and, and the emotional trauma that goes with that, they did not want to, um, you know, they, they didn't want to pursue this because the only possible explanation might be that this individual, uh, as, 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 as they were either watching Kennedy from the flank or from the rear, at some point, if, if, they, if, they, if they did it consciously, they would have to aim, and that would draw attention, you know? But if they were startled by a gunshot, and they had a rifle in their hand, and they were startled, and, and, they were gun and, 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 and they accidentally squeezed the trigger, well, it's plausible, therefore, that a person, a uniformed officer, could have simply done that, and in the chaos and confusion, nobody really might have noticed. I don't know what specific location this individual had along the motorcade route. I don't know if they're, again, if they're on the side, if they were in the motorcade, front, back, right, left, I don't know where that is, and so that's why it's, it's really, really a sketchy, cloudy issue here. I doubt if, if this person was part of a, a, a turkey shoot conspiracy where he was, he was the, the person who was designed to shoot and kill Kennedy, but rather that he did it accidentally. Now, if he did it accidentally, what, what, what would the ramifications of that be? If he did it accidentally, then, then John F. Kennedy was killed not by an assassin, which makes Kennedy out to be almost a hero or a martyr. But if Kennedy were killed horribly and tragically by accident, by some goofball who accidentally misfired his, his rifle, well, that, that would take John F. Kennedy down somewhat in, the, uh, in sort of the myth annals. He wouldn't, as it is, this country mourn terribly a slain president because obviously some dirty, rotten scoundrel wanted him killed. And there's a certain amount of, of why John F. Kennedy has risen so high in our world today. But if Kennedy had been killed, you know, by, fall, by choking on a pretzel or stumbling down the steps or some freak accident, you know, uh, then, then they're no longer a martyr. They're still dead, but no longer we, we don't grieve so, so strenuously if that's the case.